Party. You would think of, uh, after so many years of developing an operating system, that Microsoft would get their shit together by now. Like, literally, I, I just, I'm afraid. I, I can't even talk into the microphone the right way. Because, I'm telling you, right now, the uh, the level on it is almost zero. But, it is registering so loud on this damn uh, Windows PC. I don't get it. it. It just makes no sense how this happens. It is the weirdest thing. Every time I have a damn update, this is the kind of madness I go through. I, I don't get... Bill Gates, where the hell are you? What the hell is going on? Stop starting shit. Somebody, do we need to get rid of Microsoft? Maybe that's what it is. But the sad thing is, there's no other freaking operating system that can uh, do the shit that it does when it does work. This is UFO Buster Radio, episode number 400 and something. I don't fucking know anymore. (sighs) So frustrating. It really is frustrating. I want to say what's up to the guys that are in the uh, live chat right now. Uh, GameVit, Pucky, The Norm. And uh, I'm sure we'll see uh, Green Man in there shortly. By the way, on Discord, every episode, probably for the last maybe like six months, there's been a link to the Discord chat. Um, yes, it's called UFO Buster Radio Fan Group Chat, whatever. You don't have to even be a fan of the podcast, just fucking go in there. Big O was in there recently, and I had no idea until I talked to him early this morning. He was in there talking shit about my probe angels. Listen, if you have a motorcycle and uh, you're coming through Texas, or you're, and maybe next year, maybe next year we'll have UFO conferences again, like the one down in South Texas. There, I don't really think there's one in San Antonio. Fucking people here don't believe in UFOs. Now, they do believe in... Uh, you know, devils with chicken feet and shit like that. I, I, I don't know. They're more paranormal than UFOs in San Antonio from what I figured out. But if you're if you're interested, I'll gladly send you an application for the probe angels. And uh, we'll see if you got what it takes. As a matter of fact, don't even wait for the application. There's a P.O. box that also has been listed in the description of every episode. And on YouTube, since um, about three months, four months now, send your application to that P.O. box. I'll go pick it up and see what's up. Are you a candidate? We need sport bike riders because they are the first line of defense. We're They're going to be the ones that we send in first to handle up. They're like the grunts of the probe angels. We call them without the grease. So they're going to be rough and ready as a probe angels, and they're not going to play around. So uh, let's do that. The other thing I got to say is, can somebody hit a like? Can somebody can somebody hit a like? Can you talk to your neighbor about this podcast? Possibly, you know, if you're in the restroom, can you lean over to the guy next to you? Don't look at his, wank, his wanker. Don't take a look at his pee-pee. Just say, hey. Have you uh, heard about this podcast, UFO Buster Radio? Just don't look down. I don't want you to get hurt. Same thing if you're uh, a lady and you're in the restroom. Write it on a uh, piece of tissue paper. Slide it under the stall to your neighbor and say, Hey, check out UFO UFO Buster Radio. Give him a like and a, a follow. You know? Maybe that's what we need to do. But what can you do? What can you do? This is uh, the uh, space episode. We're going to talk about space. Uh, usually we have a SpaceX story, and we do this time. The drama continues down in Boca Chica. Um, we also have a story regarding the four most likely celestial bodies or uh, places in our solar system where you will find life. Where basically science has says, God damn it, there's life there. Even though they've told us, you know, the last several decades, we're like fucked. 
We're the only fuckers in the entire universe. But you know, change is good. Change is everything. We got to go with the change. And so now they're changing their tune. Now they're seeing the marvels of our own solar system. It is amazing what you can find if you stop looking billions of years into the past and just look at the fucking place that you live in. The things that you will find, the things that you're about to find. There's one article about that. And uh, Blue Origin, they're not going uh, quiet into that good night, Mr. Bezos. He's um, he's still in the game. He's doing his own thing. But uh, this Thursday, they've got something going up. The space race continues from the commercial front. And being that today uh, we saw a picture of uh, Ronnie Dawson riding a hog. He has a purple motorcycle. I'm telling you, he's got to name that thing 17. I've got a song dedicated to uh, to Ronnie. Because I could picture he could, he'll probably be listening to a song like this the next time he rides. And then we'll get into the news for today. When the sun's going down No stars in the sky I'm a head down the road Across county line Where the roll of the smoke They pour beer and wine And hearts break on the jukebox Where the neon stars shine Where the neon stars shine Dark of the night, so nobody knows. We're hanging on a memory, we're hung out to dry, just doing our time where the neon stars shine, where the folks gather around. They all look the same mm, They know my train But can't remember my name Ain't nobody listening And that suits me just fine Oh, they want to hear me cry Where the neon stars shine Neon stars shine and the whiskey flow in the dark of the night. So nobody knows. Been hanging on a memory and we're hung out to dry. I just do in my time. Neon stars shine
I don't know about you guys, but if I could find a retirement place where the stars shine and the whiskey flows, I'm in. I'm there, to be honest. Like, I could forget every freaking day from all the whiskey I was drinking. That's That'd be beautiful. That's poetry. All right, let's skip to Malou. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? I don't understand how I ended up with this uh, transition music. It's crazy. People accuse SpaceX of displacing Texas residents, destroying wildlife in a new documentary. What in the hell is going on? Really? You need a documentary to know that those Raptor engines are burning the fuck out of Boca Chica? No, you don't. Just watch the damn tests. Nothing survives around that damn thing. Do you really think anyone gives two fucks about it? Do you think that the local government did not know that if you're shooting off these fucking rockets, these advanced rockets, some of the most powerful rockets ever made, that you're not going to fry half of the fucking wildlife? I don't understand. I don't understand. There's an article here that's... uh, was published in The Hill, thehill.com. Um, it talks about this lady named Cecilia Garcia, retired social worker from Michigan. And why is she in Boca Chica? Well, because she has severe asthma. Meanwhile, Boca Chica is uh, part of the fucking state of Texas. So if for some reason your asthmatic condition is cured in the uh, uh, mosquito-laden humidity of Texas, then um, guess what? It's a big fucking state. You can take yourself and move a couple of uh, counties over to the left, to the right, maybe even go down to the uh, border of Mexico, get yourself some cheap stuff, some cheap medicine for your asthma. There is so much room in Texas... You guys are going to see, when I get this moto vlogging together through Texas, you'll see how much fucking room there is. I mean, half the fucking state is empty. But, there's not enough space for folks like Cecilia Garcia and uh, SpaceX, apparently. Um, when the coronavirus situation broke out, you know, Shittergate and all that kind of stuff, where there was no toilet paper anywhere, Um, She basically decided, fuck it, I'm going to leave Michigan because, the you know, the story is if it's warmer. Because, you know, back in the beginning, they were saying, oh, if it's warm, shit, you're not going to catch any coronavirus. That was that's what they were saying in Roswell. You know, we're going to still have our convention because it's warm out here. Nobody has coronavirus. That got canceled. And as you've seen that as soon as you saw the. the stuff in New York started to level out back in, uh, what was it, maybe April, May. All of a sudden, Texas went balls to the wall with coronavirus cases. Shit, there's still issues now. So, Cecilia, you made a bad move. You made a bad move. And that's not SpaceX's fault. It's yours. And Wuhan, you guys both fucked up. Um... So basically, she came down here because she loves the wildlife. She loves the uh, being by the ocean because you don't get that kind of shit in Michigan unless you like lakes only. Um, and she says, "Look, it is very. It's very. It's been a very stressful year." That's who she told to this organization organization called Change in America. She says, "Not because of the pandemic." Are you fucking serious? You know you're scared shitless because of the pandemic. Don't screw with us. Um, but because of SpaceX. Because they built a rocket facility in Boca Chica, 20 miles east of Brownsville on the Gulf Coast. What a perfect spot. Uh, This is why, Cecilia, Mr. Musk is going to build a whole fucking resort there just so that you can get yourself a room for those lonely nights. Or something like that. I don't fucking know. She's got asthma. It probably won't happen. Um, there's a few quotes in here from her. The other one is that um, 
She says, it's a, it's a very, very unique, beautiful area. Not for everyone because it's very remote. It's not that fucking remote. Uh, 20 miles away from Bronze, uh, Bronzeville, but that's what I love about it. Um, it was his remoteness, quietness, the unpopulated area, and the wildlife, she said. This new documentary by Vice TV is called Vice Versa Between Musk and Mars <laughs> and, and Cecilia uh, Garcia is one of the several neighbors in the area um, that refuse to sell out to Musk and SpaceX. So she's sitting there bitching about it. Here's the thing. If you willingly are saying you're going to keep your uh, your humid-ass house down by the dunes, knowing the amount of money that's being spent in building up this facility, in building up this, um, what will be the spaceport of the future, well, you're putting your own, your own, uh, your own life at risk. You're accepting the fact that there's going to be some danger just because you think the neighborhood's not going to change. But it is. It really is. The funny thing is, she says remote, probably because she's from Michigan, but she says remote because there there is a bit of a little drive, scenic drive, and you see uh, a lot of wildlife, birds and shit like that, uh, a lot of water here and there, sand dunes, as you ride down there. But all of that's going to change, Cecilia. None of that's going to be the same. You will never have your Boca Chica again. That shit's fucking gone. Uh, that's gone. That left with the very first hop. According to this, uh, SpaceX and uh, Musk, they uh, visited these folks many times, including Cecilia, trying to convince her to sell and even threatening to file for eminent domain Although, you know, that's something that just the government has. But come on. The government has been behind this from the word go. She says she's not moving. She's insulted. And why is she insulted? Because they gave her a 64-page contract offering her $190,000 for her home. She says that it was a gunpoint, uh, gunpoint offer. Kind of like the term shotgun instead. You know, you know Texas, you know. Um, SpaceX is supposed to be a good neighbor, but they're not. They act like they are God's employees. <laughs> they are flying into heaven, aren't they? Uh, Garcia said, but I'm a good neighbor. I try not to cause problems uh, or anything that I do. Yeah, you're causing problems. You're on this damn documentary. You're on here causing shit. You're talking nonsense. You refuse 190. 190K. The thing is, when we have this next hop, right? Or is it 12 miles? Three Raptor engines? We've only had one at a time. Three Raptor engines doing a 12-mile hop, which will turn into a free fall to land hopefully where it's supposed to land. And not on Cecilia's house. I'm sorry. But sometimes in certain situations, you, you got to be able to move aside. Now, do I think that 190000 for where Cecilia lived is uh, kind of like a low ball offer? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I do. I, I, I got to admit to that. At this point... Of the game, they really should be uh, hiking up the prices and just get those people out of there. We know Musk and the gang can afford help. Elon can afford it just from his personal bank. He doesn't even have to get into the uh, the corporate coffers for this. So, honestly, if I was uh, a PR person, I'd give these people about four hundred k a piece and let them go. Pay for their moving, move them the fuck out. Had throw a party for them if you need to. Maybe put up a plaque. In memory of Cecilia Garcia. She lived her long time. 
I'm just saying, they, they could pay them a little more. I get that, because these folks ran away from coronavirus. They ran away from uh, working because they retired. Why not give them a little bit more cash? In that in that regard, I can agree with them. Yes. Fantastic. I love it. Give them 400K. Get them the hell up out of there. But I think in the, at the very end, what's going to happen is this stuff is going to grow so damn fast. It is going to grow out of control. You got the resort. There's going to be so much damn traffic. Eventually, the city is going to have to do something about that road because it's what is it, two lane? When I went down, there were just two lanes in most of the road. So there were some parts where there were four lane, but uh, barely. So they're going to end up having to increase this just because of all the traffic that's going to be going down there to that resort that's going to open. And then what, Cecilia? It's all going to be gone. They were not going to offer you shit then. You get nothing. You'd be lucky if you get 120000 It is what it is. Now, we also had stories in here a couple months ago uh, about people putting in uh, complaints saying that uh, SpaceX is not abiding by the environmental protection laws. Again, strongest fucking rockets right now out there in uh, in science and rocketry. What the fuck you expect? Come on. There isn't anyone that approved for these things to happen and did not expect to have a couple of birds fried. A whole fucking flock gone every time they take off. It's expected. Because you have other places besides Boca Chica where fucking birds fly. Where you might see some crabs in the sand. Fortunately, advancements in space travel uh, are taking uh, precedence over folks that want to retire due to coronavirus. That's all I'm saying. Check out the article in the description. And listen, this might be a really good documentary to check out. Thanks to Vice. I'm not saying they don't have valid points, but there comes a uh, there comes a time when you just got to pack the shit up before it's, you know it really hits the fan. Because if they thought nine, 190 was, was low, way to that place just uh, just goes bananas with growth just south of where they are. They have to deal with all that traffic, all those people coming back and forth. It's not going to be the same place. It's not going to be remote. It's not. You'll just have more complaints and several rockets to have to deal with as the... Uh, free fall from uh, suborbital space. Check it out. Here's this track for you. Where do we go from? Where do we go from here? No one can save us. Save us from keeping clear. I don't Thank you. 
Did you guys see how the CDC reported that uh, there's new guideline, new information for you guys? Coronavirus is airborne. Like, you, you can sit around like uh, dickheads all you want, take off your mask, like if you're in a restaurant, and whoosh, God, that's it, the whole place is fucked because there's coronavirus everywhere. They're basically, you're sucking in somebody's coronavirus while you're enjoying your meal. And funny thing is, a few days later, they're like, we're just kidding. No. No, that was a misprint. What in the hell is going on? You know that that is the only logical reason for so many people having this increase in coronavirus. Come on, this shit's fucking flying in the air. Why else would they continue to push the damn mask? It's just just crazy. It is completely bananas how they retracted that. And no one really gives too many fucks about it either. Blue Origins is uh, not taking this lightly because New Shepard is about to take off. Yeah, so Blue Origin will launch the new, the next New Shepard suborbital test flight this coming Thursday in a couple of days. Um, here's the one thing that slowly I'm starting to figure out. You know, I said earlier that there's a lot of freaking empty areas in Texas. There's a lot, Cecilia. There's so much. So much empty fucking space in Texas for people with asthma that not only is Blue Origin going to shoot this new Shepard into suborbital space from Texas, because they got a launch pad here as well, we also know that Virgin Galactic is also shooting off their fucking uh, uh, rocket off suborbital space flight from Texas. We have SpaceX down south constantly shooting shit off. NASA is here. I mean, who the fuck else is here? All the rockets are taking off from Texas. September 24th, 11 a.m. Eastern. The funny thing is it really doesn't say where exactly it is from Texas. This thing is taking off. But from what I recall in my uh, Vodka laced mine that it is somewhere in central texas where this thing is taking off so anyway suborbital flight will be the seventh one for this particular vehicle from blue origin the new sherpa program Uh, it'll be taking off thursday and uh, it hasn't taken off since december of 2019 the very same vehicle so these things are reusable so basically you have a rocket and you have a uh a uh, suborbital vehicle on the top of it, sitting like a... It just looks like a phallus. Let's just be honest with it. It really does. Look at the uh, the image for this episode that you clicked on when you were going to listen to it. 
And taking off in that image is the uh, the Blue Origin Phallus. There it is, right there for you. Reusable. You can use this phallus many times. It will be the sixth time that the uh, New Shepherd takes off. Now here's the thing, New Shepherd is not only going to be used for uh, taking junk into space, Lord knows we don't have enough up there, but also people. Suborbital space flight. I would love to know if this is people like you and I. Is it somebody from India? Can someone from India, from, from Delhi, get on this and say, hey, Bezos, can I book it through Amazon Prime and get delivered into space tomorrow? Can someone from uh, Brazil, Mexico, Canada, the UK, can you just get on this new shepherd and um, check out the planet from space? That's that's what I want to know. It's not in this article. I'm sure we'll see some pricing eventually, right? Because eventually you, you run through all the scientists and all the government folks, all the rich folks, and then it's not a happening thing anymore. And then the poor folks, they get to sell their property, their 401ks, use up all their retirement money in order to see suborbital space. Crazy. Their hope is that they'll be flying folks and uh, baggage, (laughs) space junk, into suborbital space pretty soon after this test. And it really seems like uh, Blue Origin and uh, Virgin Galactic really are shooting for next year. Next year is when they want to see paying customers going into suborbital space. And I still think there should be a half-price ticket for anyone that thinks that the Earth is flat. There is one fucking way to find out for sure. Really, all flat earthers should basically vote in the president and have the president of the flat earth jump into one of these uh, Virgin Galactic or jump on uh, Bezos' ship, New Shepard, and uh, figure the shit out. Copy or put your happy ass on there, go into space, and figure out if the damn thing's flat. Come back to your minions or your followers and break the news to them. One of two things are going to happen. One is you know, that person is, is either going to get scalped as a president and basically not be in office anymore for the flat earthers. Or there's going to be a lot of unhappy people <laughs> running around, uh, almost suicidal because the earth is not flat. It's going to be a rough time for somebody. But listen, um, Bezos, or one of you guys have got to help the flat earthers answer that question. We we can't have them strapped to rockets anymore. We we see that that is dangerous. You can't order rocket parts from uh, local newspapers and internet websites and think that you're 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 not going to eventually die before you get the answer. No one wants to do it like Mike. No, this is the one Mike we shouldn't follow. We need to get up there, get these people out there. Anyway, so this Thursday, check it out. Hopefully everything goes well for the New Shepherd out of Texas, September 22nd, 11 a.m. Eastern Time. Uh, Maybe I'll be tied up uh, on YouTube somewhere so I can see this thing take off. The other phallus. It's an amazing time when it comes to spaceflight. This is why I like doing uh, this particular episode regarding space because they're... There's advances everywhere. Everyone is in a race. Except for the Russians, because they own Venus. But everyone else is trying to eventually to get to one of the uh, four places we're about to talk about in the next article. And man, I don't know, I probably got a bitch about that too. But uh, check this out. Where do we go from? Where do we go from? Did I do it again? And I go ahead and play the same damn song again. Second time this week this happens to me.
That's what we do. Live chat is out of control right now. It really is. Um, let's get ready for the last article of the night. I don't know. This might be like the fuck for fuck's sake article for tonight. Really, it is. Um, there are four of the most promising worlds for alien life in our solar system. Putty Putin, let me just tell you that Venus is not one of them. I'm just being honest with you. It's not even on top four. What the fuck are you guys doing? I, honestly, I think I should have been Russian because vodka is just amazing. But, sorry, Venus is not on the list today. The list is coming from Science Alert because you need to be aware of this shit. Mars turns out to be number one. And you wouldn't even think that because of the way they litter on the fucking uh, planet. The way they're dumping stuff on there. There's a lot of interest in Mars. But on the other side of that token, I can see why Venus is so attractive to the Russians. But still, Mars is where everyone wants to go. Is it really because it's uh, it's a hotbed of life? I don't fucking think so. It's the next damn planet over. Trust me, if they could make it to one of the other places on this list besides Mars, they'd go there first. The other three are way more hopeful, more fascinating, more amazing than Mars is. I mean, come on. A few decades ago, they were telling us Mars was totally dead. A dust bowl of orange, reddish dust. Now, all of a sudden, it's number one on the list. It has a, a 24 and a half hour day. Oh, that's very Earth-like. Polar ice caps that contract with the seasons. We've seen that, you know. Every, ever since they put those satellites around the damn thing and they sent up uh, all the rovers, we see that there's seasons. We see surfaces that are familiar to us on our own planet. Can we think, really, there's there's nothing alive there? Nothing? There's even been a, uh, a lake detected under the southern polar cap. Of course, we talk about methane every other month. Shit's farting up there. There's a lot of farting going on, but there's no life there. Methane is everywhere. 
in the Martian atmosphere, and they seem to also change with the seasons. But it's still just a a candidate for life, even though methane is usually produced by biological processes. But no one knows what the source is, so there you go. But yet everyone's racing to get there, even Elon Musk. Number two, Europa. Uh, fascinating fact here, Europa was first discovered by Galileo in 1610. 1610. And it isn't until the last few decades that we figured out how crazy Europa is. There's three other moons connected to Jupiter. Europa is one of the four. Smaller than our own moon. And it orbits it orbits Jupiter every three and a half days. It is a fascinating place. It has its own gravi- gravitational fields that's being affected by Jupiter. It's geologically active. That I means shit's going on every damn day on this moon. It's not like our hollow ass, plain ass, plain Jane moon. This is a busy moon. Tidal flexing. It's rocky, metallic interior, partially molten, kind of like our own core. Has a vast expanse of water ice, a frozen surface, liquid water, a global ocean. What more could you ask for? There's probably good fishing in the fucking place, to be honest with you. They've got geysers. Magnetic fields, chaotic terrain, ocean currents. Why would you go to Mars when you have all this fucking activity on this moon? Distance. It really, that's really what it comes down to is the distance. Enceladus is the next one. Like Europa, ice covered moon with a uh, subsurface ocean of liquid water. It orbits Saturn. 4.2 fucking too far. One day we'll get there. Not in my lifetime, not yours. Maybe not even the next person down the, the genealogy. That, that other generation is... Maybe they'll get it. Your great grand something or another. This moon has jets of water to escape from large cracks in the surface. And they spray out into space. But we're all going to Mars. Titan is the next one. The largest moon of Saturn is another one that has a substantial atmosphere. It's amazing. Most of the atmosphere is made of nitrogen, which again, another important element also here on our own planet, but important in making proteins. Radar has detected rivers, lakes of liquid methane, ethane, and possibly even cryovolcanoes. These these actually volcanoes, they don't shoot out lava, but they shoot up liquid water. Most of these studies tell us that uh, Titan, Europa, and Enceladus have a significant amount of subsurface flowing liquid water. We see that on our own planets. In all these caves, underground caves that have flowing water. This is what they're saying is on all of these moons. We can't say that right now about Mars, but uh, I'm sure by the time Elon gets there, he'll get, he'll figure that shit out. He'll figure it out himself. He doesn't need all the point dexters to do it. But there are basically other places in our own solar system that you are familiar with. You've heard of plenty of times, that in the last two, three decades have become 
the focal point of discovery when it comes to life in our own solar system. And they're right here. They're in our backyard. Relatively speaking, because we fucking can't get there. NASA has a plan to send a rover that could actually go into some of these lakes on some of these moons and uh, go for a swim, do some tests, send it all back to an orbiting vehicle to send data back. Wouldn't Wouldn't it be amazing if something gets to one of these moons about 2025 and sends back a picture of an Enceladus carp or a uh, a Titan salmon. Our own universe is... Uh, oh, shit, fuck the universe. Our own solar system is amazing, completely undiscovered. We know that on our own planet because we barely know what's in the seas that uh, cover our own neck of the woods. But just imagine the most amazing things that we will eventually find in our other planets, in our solar system, along with the uh, primordial black hole sitting out there at the outer edge. Um, it's just amazing. Things to think about. Check out check out the, uh, the description. Take a look at it. Um, amazing pictures, things to look at, uh, great information, and things that eventually when everyone gets completely tired of Mars... And we're done colonizing it in about 50 to 100 years. Eventually, you're going to know that there's been other attempts to get to these other moons. Of course, it won't tell us about it. We'll figure this out after the fact. But if there's going to be life, you bet it's going to be somewhere where there's some fluid, like water, for alien life. This is the end of the podcast. I thank you guys for joining. We'll be back on Thursday for the Thursday Freakout. Uh, this Saturday, we will have a proper Dark Horde episode. And Chris Garcia is ready to come back. We'll see what we can put together for him so that he can continue to uh, amaze everyone. With that said, don't forget to like and share. Come on. Help a brother out. Ciao. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Dose. 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 Yeah. Started from the mud, now you see us going up. Numbers never lie, now you see us blowing up. People used to front, now you see them showing up. So what's up? I've been down and now below. Keep it a buck, I don't. Always been one up on all of these boys. They be trying to front for all of these boys. I ain't got time cause they all in they feelings. Ice to the gang and we making a killing. It's 2020 and they notice the vision. You be the hero, I'm playing the villain. The underdogs and we walk in the villain. We getting money, yeah, they think that we dealing. They talking hot, yeah, if they opponents and we won't stop till we all touch a million. Don't ever forget, but we probably forgive them. I'm living. Taking the cards that was given, my blessings is already written. Wrapped it a ribbon, putting ourselves in positions to making some major decisions. I Started from the mud, now you see us going up. Numbers never lie, now you see us blowing up. People used to front, now you see them showing up. So what's up? I've been down and now below. Look, look, I'm trying to get where I'm going, but haters be trolling, that's what they f- Thinking you got me right where you want me. I tell a ghost just duck, yeah. Sending them shots, we send them back, yeah. Ain't really about that. Run, it's always bounce back. Need more hands just to count that. Stay on my bully, I need me more breeze just so we can get the team right. Loaded up fully, dogs on a leash, and you be knowing that's a scary sight. Don't happen overnight. Work smarter with some sacrifice. Sugar spice and everything nice. Mix it up, now you got us twice. We bridging the gap, they want us to rap, so fuck are we back? Hey, yeah. Drew need a plaque, we turn to the max, and we never lack. Hey, yeah. Been in my bag, and I'm a drag, I'm feeling jet lag. Hey, yeah. Came back for VK and I ain't in pack, cause I'm going back. Facts, ooh, double the racks. TD the bank, you see these blank. The Cuban is link, smoking that bank. Pull up a drink, fill up the tank. Do you think I ain't the one, but I'm the one? Who does I feel? He going dumb, you hit him drums. Came from the slums, they know we the ones, yeah. Started from the mud, now you see us going up. Numbers never lie, now you see us blowing up. People used to front, now you see them showing up. So what's up? I've been down and now below. Keep it a buck, I don't fuck with you. <laughs>